Israel. Um, how do you think the rest of the world is viewing this? Well, uh, in America, you can you can guess what the headlines are. I haven't checked. Uh, uh, I really watch American TV. I can barely contain myself when I do it, but I'm certain the accusations against Iran and Hezbollah will flow thick and fast. If I had to blame anybody, and I certainly don't have any evidence, but if, but if I had to, if I had to name my top suspect, it would be Mossad. I mean, Mossad, I mean, the fingerprints of, of attacks like this or attempted attacks have Mossad's fingerprints all over them. But recall last October, the alleged plot against the Saudi ambassador in Washington that Iran supposedly planned. Uh, the charges didn't pass the smell test. It didn't even rise to the level of a B-movie. And yet, and yet headlines raged in America for days. People in other countries just laughed at them. The charges were so ludicrous. Israel makes charges. America makes charges, Christine. But no evidence is provided. But Stephen, what, what motivation would the Mossad, Israel's intelligence agency, um, have for targeting two Israeli embassies? Well, the motivation would be to blame it on Iran and Hezbollah. I mean, Israel has no compunction about killing Jews as well as anybody else if it serves their intention. America has no compunction about killing Americans. They send Americans into the meat grinders of war, simply have no interest in their security or welfare. When USS Abraham Lincoln, one of America's main deterrents against Iran's military. On patrol in the Persian Gulf, the carrier is vital to keeping one of the world's most important shipping lanes open for traffic, the Strait of Hormuz. Now the Nimitz-class carrier itself had to transit through the strait only a few miles from Iranian territory. The USS Abraham Lincoln has more than 70 aircraft on board, many of them jet fighters like the F-18 Hornets that you see behind you. Nevertheless, the U.S. Navy still says even the carrier of this side could be vulnerable to an attack from the Iranian Navy. About 20% of global oil exports go through the Strait of Hormuz. In the standoff over Iran's nuclear program, Tehran has threatened to close the Strait, a move that could cause major damage to the world's economy. Now on behalf of the EFD, Mr. Farage. Well, Commissioner, you picked the right man. Puppet Papademos is in place. And as Athens caught fire on Sunday night, he rather took my breath away. He said, violence and destruction have no place in a democratic country. What democratic country? He's not even a democratically elected prime minister. He's been appointed by you guys. And Greece isn't run through democracy now. It's run through a troika. Three foreign officials that fly into Athens airport and tell the Greeks what they can and can't do. The violence and destruction that you saw on Sunday is being caused directly because people are having their democratic rights taken from them. What else can they do? And I must say, if I was a Greek citizen, I would have been out there joining those protests on Sunday. I'd be out there trying to bring down this monstrosity that has been put upon those people. And in his efforts, in the puppet's efforts, to get the MPs to vote for the bailout package, he warned them that if they didn't do so, there would be a dramatic decline in living standards. Well, as he looked outside the front door, has he seen the fact that 50% of the young people are unemployed already? Has he seen the fact that the economy, far from stalling, has contracted for five years in a row and is now accelerating on a downward death spiral, a contraction of 7% per annum? Greece is being driven into the ground. And I think, frankly, when it comes to chaos, you ain't seen nothing yet. These policies are driving Greece towards a revolution. They need to be set free. If they don't get the drachma back, you will be responsible for something truly, truly horrible. That's what I'm feeling. And
Hello, everyone. Welcome to Global Government News. Today is Wednesday, February 15th, 2012, and I'm Darko. My website is ggnonline.com, and on YouTube is ddarko2012 and 2013. Uh, check out all the links and headlines in YouTube's video description. All right, sorry, but I feel like a horse in the, that's been locked in the gate for like seven hours now. I just want to get these freaking videos done, and I want to be able to get this information out. So here we go. Pardo probed U.S. reaction to unilateral Iran strike. A Mossad chief sought info on Washington's reaction if Israel were to unilaterally strike Iran. Newsweek reports, that's right. In his recent meetings in Washington, D.C., Mossad chief aimed to discover how the U.S. would react were Israel to attack Iran's nuclear facilities. According to an unnamed source in the report, Pardo asked if the U.S. was ready to bomb, and if not, what does it mean if Israel does it anyways. It says the report also said Israel had stopped sharing a significant amount of information with Washington regarding its own military preparations over the Iran issue. Well, the U.S. had a bunch of troops over in Israel to uh, carry out a, quote, exercise, end quote, and it got uh, thousands of troops, and then it got canceled, right? So I'm sure they uh, have a pretty good freaking idea what's going on there, but they're going to play dumb. U.S. is going to play dumb, and uh, they're going to start, uh, they're not going to start, but they're going to finish World War III, which just started, like I said before, in 1945, uh, right after the end of World War II. It says here, Iran patrol boats, drones, uh, shadow the Abraham Lincoln as it passes through the Strait of Hormuz. That's right, the uh, USS uh, Abraham Lincoln, which uh, basically went through the Strait of Hormuz a month ago, was trying to test the waters. And uh, it goes on and it says that the radio operators also picked up an Iranian drone and surveillance helicopter in Iran's airspace near the strait. So, yeah, it's interesting. What they're doing right now is like a Gulf of Tonkin type deal. It doesn't even really matter whether the boat is actually exploded or sunk into the bottom. They just need to make people think that it was. Um, in this case, what? They're sending out the, link, uh, the Lincoln, the assassination, the sacrifice out there um, in order to uh, kick this thing off. And it says here, a U.S. Admiral says, forces prepared to confront Iran. This is from the 12th of February. Top U.S. Navy official in the Gulf on Sunday says he takes uh, Iran's military capabilities seriously, uh, but insists his forces are prepared to confront any Iranian aggression in the region. So it's, it, it's just a complete joke. It's like David versus Goliath. I mean, um, anyways, I'm not going to go into it. Russian general Iran's enemies to decide course soon. So Russia's top general said on Tuesday that he expects Iran's enemies to decide in the next few months on how to deal with a nuclear program that the United States and Israel have uh, said they might attack. So this is over commerce. This is over oil. This is over Iran having a central bank. And as far as them having nuclear weapons goes, it's a bunch of crap because the United States, I uh, wanted to cover this more with the articles. I have them. I'll include them in there. But uh, basically, you had Obama saying what? That they're going to decrease the nuclear arsenal in the United States. Why do you think that is? Why do you think that they would come out and say that? Well, because they've perfected something called di uh, directed energy weapons. And it's far more sophisticated uh, than, than the Iranians have. The Russians are into it. The Australians are into it. Uh, and the U.S. and the West are into it as well. Directed energy weapons. Go look it up. And that's why they're getting rid of their nuclear stockpile. So little uh, Iran, who's trying to become independent, have their own central bank. Uh, they have their own trading and whatnot. Now they're trying to have their own energy as well. Um, besides natural gas reserves. Uh, what? And they're, and they're trying to do what they can with what they got which is old technology, like the old drone that was, uh, you know, given to them by the West recently. So it's a big freaking joke. You're talking about the military-industrial complex and the military arm, the United States being scared somehow or not being able to take on Iran. I mean, dude, just give me a freaking break. I mean, they're going to have so many weapons, especially Israel, that they're going to be busting out with. It's going to make people uh, think that they're watching a movie. Bangkok grenade uh, attacks uh, wound Iranian suspect and four others. So they have an Iranian suspect for this grenade attack in Bangkok, Thailand. That's right. Thai plot targeted Israelis, police say. So it just... It's just it's just insane the amount of propaganda that's going out. India walks tightrope as U.S. toughens Iran sanctions. Basically going in, going in there saying how um, India doesn't know what to do. Talking about its dependence on Iranian oil and unwillingness to join U.S.-led sanctions against Iran puts them at odds. But uh, you know it's, it, this is the thing you have the India uh, uh, Indian intelligence and you have Pakistani intelligence both on. 
basically working for the West, Israel and the United States. So they carry out, they're the ones actually carrying out these false flag attacks. So again, they're not innocent and I don't think they're going to be targeted. The only difference is they need to make sure uh, Pakistan, before they lose Pakistan, uh, because the people are just fucking pissed off uh, after all the drone strikes and whatnot, that uh, what they need to get rid of their nuclear arsenal in Pakistan before they uh, cut them loose. So that's what they're trying to do and get you know they've got a regime change going on in Pakistan. Things are really hot over there, but India I do see sticking uh, uh, with the United States. But you never know; they may go with China and Russia. But in the end, it's all one big corporation. You have what 13 families, 300 uh, subfamilies, and whatnot running the running the world. They just kind of bicker about who's going to get control over what. And uh, we, we at the bottom uh, just have little stars over our head, confused as hell as to what's going on. So Iran announces nuclear advances, but offers no uh, offers new talks, just like Syria, but they don't want to listen. Iran oil, just like Gaddafi in Libya. Iran oil ministry denies state media reports to stop uh, the oil. The Strait or Hermuse. So there's a bunch of propaganda there that they shut it down when they didn't. Brent ends at eight month high on supply risk. So good for the oil guys, right? Good business. Russia urges serious search for compromise with Iran. Said it must work harder to win concessions from Iran. Uh, next up, the road to Tehran goes through Damascus. That's right, so you got to clear out Syria uh, for Israel to get to Iran. Next up, a UN to vote on Syria resolution. It was backed by the Arab League plan aimed at ending the 11-month conflict. Well, it's really a siege by a bunch of terrorists just like Libya. Uh, actually, it's the same Al-Qaeda from Libya that are doing this. Arab League proposes peacekeeping force, so they want a peacekeeping force to support their uh, uh, Syrian rebels, which are Al-Qaeda. Syrian opposition seeks to wipe the Assad name off the map via Google. Pretty scary stuff here. They're talking about rewriting history here, guys. Google crowdsourcing program map maker to rename key streets, bridges, and boulevards after the revolutionary heroes, right? So you have a lot of street names here in the United States named after Freemasons. People don't even know that. Uh, but what? After the revolutionary heroes, which are basically terrorists. Now, I'm not sure if this is true right here, but Bahrain protests an NGO coup plot, defense chief says. He says... The uprisings in his country has been supported by foreign forces. Bahrain deports six Americans for illegal activities. Well, what were they doing? Uh, looks here that they said they were joining pro-democracy demonstrations. Egypt sends U.S. charging documents on democracy building groups. See, democracy building groups. It's the big business, just like the oil, right? The uh, United States received a document from Egyptian authorities that lays out charges against the staff of the U.S. and international democracy building groups, the State Department said on Tuesday. So go check this out. This is kind of an interesting article. And it's talking about the 16 Americans that were arrested and detained in Egypt. For what? For stirring this stuff up, creating these uprisings, fomenting them. Just like the guy from Google. Remember in Egypt, the Indian guy or whatever he was? And he came back and he's a big hero. Guess who one of those individuals were? They include... Uh, among them, Sam LaHood, the son of U.S. Transportation Secretary uh, LaHood, Ray LaHood. Then we have Syria blast hits Hamas pipeline, Hamas under Hamas under attack. And of course, this is coming from what the activists in Syria say: an explosion has hit an oil pipeline. And they go on there and they said that. Um, the uh, state media said that they were armed terrorists behind the explosions, but the activists uh, said they've been bombarding uh, that area, uh, the security forces, that is, for the past 12 days. And the West colluding with Arab allies against Syria, says Syrian ambassador to... He said that almost the entire world is fighting against the government of Syrian President Bashar al-Assad, and there are several thousand foreign-backed terrorists in Syria committing acts of violence, saying that the West is arming and funding these terrorist groups that the West is calling rebels. Arabs open way for arming Syrians, civil war fear. So this is a bunch of uh, propaganda BS again. Apparently, Arab foreign ministers led by Gulf states hinted to Syrian President Assad that unless he halts his violent crackdown, i.e. trying to get control over his country before they lose their sovereignty to the globalists, some Arab League members might arm his uh, opponents. Well, they're already armed by Israel and the United States. We've already covered that before. Paying at the gas pump on its way, gas prices earliest ever rise above 350 means motorists could pay more than ever this year. Then we have UK unemployment continues to edge up, and it's actually set to soar unemployment, that is, in 2012. Australian job markets worse year since 19.
1992 and why are record numbers of young adults jobless and living at home with mom and dad? Well, it's all by design. It's called economic warfare and social warfare. So while the Greeks are bartering with gum and that, Spanish village goes back to their old currency and ditches the euro. Then we have Hungary gives needy people money to burn in their furnaces due to global warming because it's so cold. Says here, women threaten to jump off Athens' office uh, block after Greek minister warns that people cannot take any more and private security firm could run UK police station. Pe Pentagon may force troops out to meet budget restraints, but don't worry, the CIA will fill in along with the drones, and then the machines will take over. Thank you.